Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another TheMMATakeover.com interview. My name is Keith Schillen. Today's guest has been a professional mixed martial arts fighter for eight years. He has a record of 9-1 and one and is 2-1 and one in the UFC. He returns to action after a three-year layoff. Yeah, three years. He returns to the Octagon at UFC Fight Night 110 on June 10th in New Zealand when he takes on Damian Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, Vince from Hell Pichel. Vince, how you doing, man? What's up, man? I'm good, Keith. How you doing, bud? Uh, good. Excellent. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm glad to have you back, man. It's been it's been forever. How you, you know, what's going on? Honestly, it feels good to be back, man. I I, I feel like I, I came back from the dead. Yeah, it's like uh, like walking okay. dead kind of thing. It's like a zombie. Yeah, I got my second chance. So, Or actually... Honestly, this is probably my third chance. Yeah, I yeah, I was going to say that, yeah. Um, so um, we haven't had a chance to have you on uh, yet, so uh, we're excited to get that. But one thing, we're just going to try to get a little background on you. Um, obviously, uh, we have a lot of new uh, MMA fans, especially in the last three years. So they might not even know, might not have seen you fight, might know anything all about you. So let's start right from the very beginning. How did you get into mixed martial arts? Um. Honestly, to, to cut it short, I was a punk ass kid. Okay. I was younger, and I got a lot of fights. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was dating this girl, and her dad was best friends with uh, this guy Mark the Bear Smith, who was a professional fighter. Okay. And uh, he basically just challenged me one day, like, "You think you're tough, like fighting in the streets, like this and that?" And he's like, "Why don't you go to a gym and fight some guys who really know how to fight?" And, yeah. And, you know what I mean? Can take care of themselves. So I was like, "All right." I'm down for that. Like, I'm, I'm a super competitive person. So I went into the gym uh, that he sent me to. I started training, got my ass kicked, and fucking loved it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that line. I got my ass kicked and loved it. Like, I've, <laughs> like, I've, yeah, I enjoy cool. fighting. Um, I've, I've actually fought professionally myself. I enjoy winning. I don't enjoy losing and get my ass kicked. So that's funny that you said that. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> It wasn't like I enjoyed getting my ass kicked. It was like I got my ass kicked, and I was like, "Holy shit! People possess this kind of power." Yeah. I I I mean, I've been in dozens of fights. I've been I've been hit. I've been stabbed, honestly, and and I've never felt helpless like the first time I went in the gym and actually rolled with someone who knew some jujitsu. Sure. And it was at that point that I was like, "I'm doing this shit. Like, I'm learning this, and I want to I want to have that power. I want to be able to do that. You know what I mean?" Yeah, I want, I want to be able to to have the skills that this guy has. It, it's funny because it seems like. It. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Good. Or that was that was it. I was just gonna say, and I just stuck with it. Yeah, uh, the funny thing about MMA when I hear about fighters, usually when we ask, is like usually like three responses. You know, obviously there's plenty more, but usually the three general responses are, "Hey, I grew up wrestling." That's one response, and you know, naturally, I grew up wrestling. I love to compete. The next step in competing when you, you know, max out in NCAA or internationally is to go on to mixed martial arts. The second one we get is, hey, I've been martial arts my whole life. I grew up in Kempo or Taekwondo or whatever, you know. And the third response yeah, I is... I actually had no background in any kind of uh, martial art. I never wrestled. I never did... Yeah, and that's always that's always my third. The third response is always is, man, I just like fighting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was just talking to another guy, and he was saying, like, man... I saw a UFC video and I was like, "Man, that shit's cool." And I think I'm pretty tough. I think I could be good at this. So I went out and me and my friend started sparring in the backyard, <laughs> you know. And then, then now they're a career. So it's it's funny you get those different aspects and you fall in that third. Just I'm tough and I want to show that I'm tough. Yeah, and honestly, like for me too, it's it's the love of fighting. Like I I'm comfortable in chaos and I've been fighting my whole life. Okay. And, it, it to me, I like I got in a lot of fights and it was never like, oh, I hate you. I mean, yeah, sure, I got in problems where I hated someone and I and I wanted to hurt them, like yeah. actually hurt them. But for the most part, like when I got in fights, it was always it was always me. A lot of times, me defending like someone, like a friend or someone that I didn't know who who was obviously being bullied or, or picked on or something like that. And and I kind of always took it on myself because I enjoyed like the, the conflict of of, sure. of violence and fighting that I would take it upon myself to. You know what I mean? Like yep. protect that person or do what I had to do. So and now, now you can do it and you can get paid for it instead of getting arrested or kicked out of high school or different things like that. Exactly. Yeah, because I got kicked <laughs> out of every school in okay. where I live. Uh, so obviously, the big thing that happened uh, in your career 
was when you got selected to be on the Ultimate Fighter. Now, obviously, I'm going back three years. I'm sure you're just sick of talking about it. I'm just trying to build some background on you. You got put in the Ultimate Fighter house. Uh, you were part of that live season where if yeah. people don't know, um, you might not know. Usually what happens with the Ultimate Fighter, it's a, it's a six weeks or eight in the house. They tape it. They edit it. You know, they put it out. Uh, the fights happen probably three. You know, the fights we're watching right now with the uh, – Dominic, uh, excuse me, not Dominic, uh, Cody Garbrandt and TJ Dillashaw season. That happened. That's already happened. They already know who's in the finals. Uh, your season yeah. was unlike that. Your season was when you sat down and watched the fight, that fight was happening live. Um, so yeah, you're, you were right part of the most there. unique season ever. Um, so my question is, how did you like being in the house? Honestly, I really liked it at first. And okay. it was like such a surreal experience. And uh, real quick, before I even got the Ultimate Fighter, okay. I almost qu I almost quit fighting professionally. Okay. Because uh, I trained over at Big John McCarthy's. That's where I started. That was that's like my home gym with Big John. Okay. And uh, I was telling Big John one day, I was like, "Hey man, like I'm getting these little shows. I was kind of just running through people. So I was like, I want like a I want a big fight. I want sure. I want I mean not like a huge fight, but I want to fight a Bellator. I want a WC because they were open at that time in Strike Force. Yeah. And uh, we tried and tried, and, and I couldn't get anything because, I mean, no one really knew who I was. They just knew that I was, you know what I mean? I was like, I think I was like 5 or 6-0 and oh at the time, 7-0. and oh. And then, uh, you know what I mean? No one really knew, though, because there's so many fighters, you know what I mean? It's kind of like a crapshoot. Yeah. And uh, I had a friend, uh, Curtis, who actually passed away the uh, day before my birthday when I, right when I found out they were having alternate fighter trials in my weight class. Okay. And I kind of was like, you know what? This is a sign. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna try for the Ultimate Fighter. If I make it, I'll continue. If if I don't, then you know maybe it wasn't meant to be. That was it. So I tried out for the Ultimate Fighter. I made it, and oh, man, here I am. Yeah, I'm still doing it. So um, after the Ultimate Fighter, uh, you get you get to go into the UFC. Uh, your first fight against Husma Havilov, who's you know still one of the best lightweights in the world. Unfortunately, didn't go yeah. your way. Then you missed a year. Yeah. Uh, due to yeah, injuries, I yeah. Well, I was being nice. Uh, you, you lost a, you lost a year due to injuries. Um, you came back um, after already dealing with a year full of injuries. You come back. Uh, you get back to back victories. Uh, Garrett Whiteley, and then followed up with Anthony Njuguwani, who is probably the biggest win in your career so far. You have this two fight winning streak. Everything's going great. Life's great. And then three years worth of injuries, like. Holy shit, dude. Are you cursed? Bad luck? What? Uh, yeah, let me explain that to you. So, yeah, I, I came back after that, that first layoff uh, from Cabal off my loss. Uh, I fought Garrett Whiteley. Um, I came back strong, got my unanimous. Um, I fought it. That was in January, I think, of 14. And then in May of 14, I fought Inja Kwani. In the uh, first 30 seconds of that fight with Inja Kwani, he threw a uh, right cross that hit me in my left uh, orbital, broke my left orbital. Okay. And I ended up having double vision for that point on for another 10 so when i fought for Andrew 10 Kwani, months that whole fight yeah that whole fight i was fighting in Kwani, i had double vision I, there's no way for me to i, I was if you read watch the fight you could see me closing one eye as i'm throwing combos because i can't see who i'm hitting but uh so that happened and then um after the fight i went back to work i had a regular job um i worked for triple a i drove around a battery van and i sold and installed batteries okay so uh I was doing that one Sunday morning, and I and I got a call to change a tire. So I'm driving. I get to the house. I'm changing the tire, and I ended up pulling my shoulder, changing the tire, needing major shoulder surgery. I ended up getting a okay. uh, type four slap tear in my labrum, and then it affected my bicep. So I had to get my bicep reattached. Okay. Um. So that surgery put me out. And that this is after. Put me out for, for this... probably about a year, another year. I was, I was yeah. looking at being out. Um, but since I got injured on the job and I was going through a workman's comp battle, um, workman's comp, I mean, to, to keep it short is nothing I ever want to go through again. Yeah. I would never, ever, ever want to file another workman's comp claim in my life if I could. It was okay. such a horrible experience. They dragged it out. I had to fight them tooth and nail because of fighting. They were trying to blame it on fighting. Of course, yeah. I wasn't getting any money, so I'm, I'm running through all my fight money, all my savings from the Ultimate Fighter and from my fight. Um, it caused a lot of problems with my fiance Kelly. We ended up actually breaking up. Really? 
Sorry to um, hear that. Yeah, it's all right. Um, shit happens. And I kind of just, I was at a really low point in my life. You know what I mean? I had surgery. Sure. I couldn't even, I couldn't even really wipe my own ass. I was pretty helpless. Jeez. Um, I had to, I had to move in with some friends, kind of just start my life over and, and recuperate as I'm dealing with workman's comp and, and all these battles, um, on top of just other, you know, just mentally exhausting things that I was going through at the same time too. And, uh, <clears throat> I just kept my head down, kept working, did what I had to do. And, and honestly, it crossed my mind a lot if I was going to have to retire or not. And, and it, Jeez. it bothered me, you know, that, that kind of, yeah. that kind of thought, like, honestly, it makes me cry. It, it makes me super sad. Uh-huh. And it, I was kind of hating it, but I always kept that little hope that, you know what? Things will always work out. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that things always work out the way that they should. Yeah. And I'm the kind of person that just goes with the flow because of it. So, you know, I just did my thing. I went with the go. And shit, man, here I am. Um, the, the hard part, I've been actually trying to fight since uh, December. But uh, I'm going to school right now. And it's okay. kind of like conflict of interest, like fighting between my school schedules. Sure. I'm only allowed to miss so many days of school. Yeah. So that was kind of putting a damper on it. What and, are you studying? Uh, I'm actually going to school for an electrician. Um, before I was fighting, I was an electrician. Okay. And uh, when I when I quit AAA, I needed a, obviously another job to, yeah. to support myself. So yeah. I went and joined the, uh, the the IBW out here in Ventura County. Okay. And so now I'm going through the apprenticeship program in school as an electrician. So I was working. I'm working full time. Uh, two days. Uh, two nights a week I go to school and then I train every day so I w- that's, that's my life I wish you said you were studying to be a workers comp lawyer <laughs> you probably know it now you probably could do it now nah, you know what those fuckers are worthless too man I had one <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anything easier. so let me just dissect a little bit what you were talking that you, you you know you obviously you were trying to basically recap three years in like a three minutes so obviously I know that's really tough um, yeah. I just, I wrote down some injuries that I'm trying to do some research on you. Torn labrum, torn rotator cuff, torn bicep, broken orbital bone, uh, so, shoulder surgery. Um, during this whole time, you know, you're, you're out, you're trying to get back to fighting and, and I'm, you know, I don't want to pile on on the negativity, but did you ever just question if it was even worth it? Like, is it worth to come back, you know, dealing with all these injuries? Oh yeah, all the time. I mean, like one of the, one of the worries that I have as a fighter, and I'm sure all fighters do, is what kind of condition am I going to be in when I'm done? You know what I mean? When I'm sure, retired and I'm old, and you know what I mean? Like I don't have any kids now, but I do want kids, and like if I have kids, like am I going to be able to play with them? You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm the kind of person that even if I'm hurt, I'm still going to play with my kids. You know what I mean? I'll I'll cripple my way through life if I have to. I mean, I'd rather not, but. Yeah, that, that thought's always in your head, and, and you know, health is a, is a big concern. You always want to be healthy, but I don't know, man. I just I just kept my head down kept going. So, but, so, so you said you mentioned you want to have kids, you want to have a family one day. You, you said you broke up with your girlfriend. You got a new girlfriend? Uh, no, I'm not seeing anyone right now. Okay, um, you live, you, listen, we have a lot of female listeners out there. Uh, anybody, yeah. any good-looking ones in the California area, make sure you reach out to Vince, send him some pictures. <laughs> You know, a couple of nudie pitchers, maybe, and uh, you know, we'll line them up. I mean, we got to, you know, he's about to move to three and one in the UFC, so you know, a lot of female uh, fans out there, reach out to him. <laughs> Shit, I'm coming. I'm planning on coming out so violent they might make me four and one in the UFC. I'm sorry, wait, you broke up. Say that again. I said I'm gonna come out so violent in my fight. They're probably gonna make me four and one after this one. Okay, <laughs> all right. Hey, you know what? You gotta be in New Zealand. You know what? You got these. Good-looking New Zealand women, you know, got to get that that nice accent and stuff. So if you're in New Zealand, reach out to him. Oh yeah, I can't wait for that, man. <laughs> so 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 I'm, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for an accent. Yeah, <laughs> I hear. You. So uh, yeah, obviously the obvious question is how healthy are you now? Honestly, I don't. I don't feel like I've ever been healthier. Okay. Like it's it's almost a a, a feeling of of ecstasy where I don't, I don't honestly understand why I feel so healthy right now. Like okay. my mental state is, is so high and my physical ability and my condition is so high right now that, I mean, the only time I've ever been in, that I felt this good is when I was on the ultimate fighter, just working and working and working. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Dominic and Eric Delfio, Dominic Cruz, Eric Delfio were basically sure. just 
working us so hard, getting us in such sick shape. Like that's how I feel. I feel great. I have no injuries. Nothing's even sore. Um, I changed a lot of my, I changed a lot of my training camp. Um, I was kind of a, kind of a hard headed trainer where I would go in and bang a lot. And, you know, I mean, I would practice my technique and I'm pretty technical, but I'm more of a, I'm more of a, a banger kind of person. Yeah, so yeah. Stand there and throw. I mean, I like to plant. You throw. hit hard and. So, yeah. So I've been, I've been trying to kind of change my training up a little bit and I have a lot. And it's been helping me a lot as far as uh, just being sore and injured and hurt and stuff. And, you know, I, mean, sure. I still get the intensity of it and, and the cardio and stuff out of it, but now I'm taking care of my body more. I've, I've actually learned a lot from these injuries that I need to take care of myself now. So, so that's what I'm doing and, and I feel super healthy and okay. I'm ready to go. So, um, you know, the, sometimes fighters say who's been out for a while, they'll say being out kind of like recharges their brain because, you know, your brain's in training camps all the time is draining, dieting, talking to people like me, asking questions, analyzing everything you say. So just the mental aspect get away might have helped. Um, but one question I want to ask you is, is you mentioned Dominic Cruz. Obviously, Dominic Cruz is the perfect thing in a situation very similar to where you're in. I mean, you know, just talk about yeah. the show. He, he got hurt on the show the season you were on and, and – and had to pull out of a fight and different things. So, um, have you reached out to him? Got any got any advice? You know, because basically he's already yeah, gone actually, through the uh, same thing. Yeah, since the show, uh, me and Dominic actually became pretty good friends. Okay, um, I talked to him pretty regularly uh, as long as other guys. Like I still talk to San Cecilia. Okay, I talked to Mike Yessa. Um, I talked to like Miles Jerry sometimes, James Vick. Um, I actually just saw Chris Saunders last night. I was at some fights and he was fighting that night. So okay, I to talk to him last night, but yeah. You know, I still talk to some of the guys. Like on that show, you you build friendships. You know what I mean? Like sure. you know, you're not going to be best friends with everyone, but you build friendships and, and brotherhoods. And as much as we're all fighters, and we at the end of the day, you know, we could fight each other and, and have to kick each other's ass. Like we're all brothers. You know what I mean? And, and sometimes brothers fight, and that's just the way it is. So, um, but he, I, I talked to him a lot about it, especially like going through his injuries sure. and, and the battles. And we've been we both kind of went through the same stuff, so. We, we both like talk about it and stuff and, and you know, I mean, we're, we're, me and him are pretty similar as far as, as, far as like the mental thing where we just don't stop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we don't, we don't have that. We don't have that quit in us where people are going to tell us no, or people are going to doubt us or things are going to seem impossible, but we're going to do it anyway. I'm still going to try. Um, I'm a fighter through and through man to the bone. So if, if I have any fight in me, you're going to see it. Um, so obviously the real question is, is do you believe in ring rust? I mean, there's a lot of people who believe that it's true. Some people like Donna Cruz have said, ring rust is a mind thing. Uh, I'm assuming nah, you're on that side bullshit. of it. Yeah. I'm assuming you're on that ring side. Is bullshit. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't believe in that. Um, cause honestly, like we're all in the gym every day and we're all fighting. You know what I mean? The only difference in an actual fight is we're not wearing the gear, you know what I mean? We're actually trying to knock each other out. Sure, so yeah. It's not like you're not in that combative state all the time, so I don't really believe in that. And, I mean, plus, I just, like I said, I, I was I was born a fighter. I wasn't made, I mean, I was made a fighter, obviously, like coming into a fighter, but I was born to fight. And, and this is something that I've always wanted to do, something I've always felt that I was that I wanted to do and I was going to be good at, and it's what I do. So, uh -huh. ring rusting, I, I think that's just a mental thing where, people will kind of screw themselves thinking into, oh, I've been out so long. Am I going to, you know what I mean? Like people kind of psych themselves out. And that's a bad thing to do because in MMA, I, I believe MMA is 90% mental. Everyone can get in shape. Everyone can be strong. Everyone uh -huh. can know techniques. Everyone can know kickboxing. So the, the real challenge fight is building up your mental stability and your mental strength to basically like, win or come back dead on your shield you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's, it's that it's that killer be killed uh, instinct that just never will go away so you talk about it you feel like you're mentally prepared you said you never felt healthier you're physically prepared so let's actually talk about the actual fight uh you're fighting damian brown he's two and one in the ufc he's on a two fight winning streak um so i got kind of two part question the first part is how did this fight come along like were you keeping in contact with the ufc were they keeping in contact with you like during these we like, you know, did they always knew you were coming back, or, you know, was it kind of some like surprise? Like, hey, you called your manager. Your manager says, hey, calls them, says, hey, believe it or not, Vince is ready to go. Like, how did that come? And then, how did the actual fight with Damien get picked? 
Um, actually, like, the UFC has been, like, really cool with me. Like, Joe Silva and Sean Shelby, um, those guys have been really cool with me. I got a pretty decent relationship with them. Okay. So when I got injured, I mean, I talked to Joe Silva, and I was like, hey, man, like, I'm hurt. I need to get surgery. And, and Joe Silva was on. He made me feel so relaxed that he was like, you know what? It's cool. Just heal up and let me know when you're ready to fight. Okay. That's all he said. Okay. And I was like, shit. I was honestly expecting to kind of go back and forth with him a little bit about it, but I don't know. He, he made me feel like I just need to take care of me and then I'll come back. No big deal. So I was like super stoked. And, um, so I did my thing. I went through my injury and like I said, I've been trying to fight since last December. I've been trying to, trying to work my, work my magic and get a fight. Um, but things are just, my life has just been kind of, kind of putting that to the side just because of uh, my scheduling and stuff. And I, when I come back, I don't want to be unprepared. You know what I mean? I want to make sure I'm prepared for this fight. I'm gonna come out. I'm nine and one. I don't plan on. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't want to have another another notch to that, sure. to that lost side. So, so I'm, I'm making sure that I'm fully fully ready for this fight. Okay. So let's talk about Damien. When you look at him, obviously, I'm sure you've already been watching film on him, trying to get an idea about him. Um, two part question: When you when you see him, what stands out? Where you say, "All right, I got to be prepared for this. He's good at this. He's good at." This. Be prepared for this. And then on the flip side, you know, obviously without giving away your, your strategy, tell us where do you think you have an advantage on? All right. Um, let's see. Yeah. When, when I, uh, when I watched the tape on him, <clears throat> Damien, he's, he's a tough dude. He, uh, he's a, he's a military vet. Yeah. He's mentally tough and he's always there to fight. Um, when when the fight came around, honestly, like Joe Silva hit up my manager and was like, "Hey, we got," or actually Shelby, my manager talked to Shelby and he was like, "Hey, I want to fight." And Shelby's like, "Okay, well, I got this guy, Damian Brown, who wants to fight, you know, this date, this card." And my manager hit me up and was like, "Hey, Damian Brown, this fight?" I said, "Yes," almost instantly. Okay. I didn't even look him up or anything. Nothing. I was like, Give "Okay." Me. I was, I need to fight. I just want to fight. Let me get out there. I need, I need to get out this anger that I've been building up these last three years. I need to let it go. So it just came in, but I feel, uh, he's, he's a tough dude. Mm-hmm. He's got some good stand up. His ground game is pretty good. Um, I feel like, I honestly feel like I'm a little better than him all around. Okay. Um, I feel like I just have that little edge on him in the stand up. I feel like I'm going to have it on the ground. Okay. Um, and I feel like I'm going to have it with the takedowns. Um, I don't, I don't really have so much as a game plan. My game plan is always just to go in there and fight. Of course, I have little things that I watch on him that I'm like, okay, I'm going to expose his weaknesses and, and his holes. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm concentrating on that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I don't really put too much into a game plan as far as like, oh, I'm going to stand up a strike with him or I'm going to go on the ground with him. I let the fight go where it goes. Like, sure. whatever the guy gives me, I take. And, okay. and that's the kind of fighter I am. Yeah. So, that's the game plan for the fight, just to go out there and fight and, and see what happens. Just to have fun, honestly. Cause okay. That's, that's to have fun and fight. And, and, yeah, it's funny. I, I asked basically a similar question to pretty much every fighter I talk to. You get two responses. We got one guy who's like, basically, that kid in in high school that was studying and knew every question and knows everything about the guy. And then you got the other guy who's like, man, if I study and know everything about him, I don't fight my fight. I fight his fight or I'm looking for this. And then he surprised me with something else. So it's just better to flow. So you seem like to be the guy. I just want to flow, see what happens. And, and, and you know, obviously be aware of certain things, but just flow and see what happens. Exactly. Yeah. Cause he's got a strength and he's got a things that he's good at. So I concentrate on those, but I don't, I don't have it in my head. Like he's going to throw those. Ladies and gentlemen, this is David from the MMATakeover.com. Unfortunately, the last part of Vince's interview got cut off, and we really don't understand why. But we really want to thank Vince for uh, coming on and talking with us. I know he's uh, very busy, and we just want to say thank you, and uh, welcome to the MMA Takeover family. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was our interview with Vince from Hell Pichel. Please check out his next fight coming up here very soon. And also, to continue to receive the best MMA coverage, go to TheMMATakeover.com. That's the T-H-E, MMA Takeover.com. And please follow us on all of our social media accounts. Thank you.